Good evening to all members of our Board of Governors. My name is Meital Landau, a professor in the Faculty of Biology. It is my pleasure to moderate this panel focused on an extremely important topic of new faculty recruitment at the Technion. I arrived at the Technion almost a decade ago, in 2012, after a fun postdoc at UCLA. So as the veteran member of this panel, first let me introduce the other faculty member. First, Dana Solav is an assistant professor in the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Dana returned to the Technion after completing her postdoc at MIT. Dana lives on campus in the Zeloni Graduate Student Village. Her research focuses on biomechanics. Next, Asaf Zinger is from the Wolfson Faculty of Chemical Engineering, where he received his PhD. Asaf is back home after completing his postdoc at the Houston Methodist Academic Institute at the Houston Methodist Hospital. His research group designs cell-specific targeted nanotechnologies for improved therapeutic outcomes in brain injuries, neural diseases, and various cancers. Asaf and his family live on campus. Next, Joshua Grollman is an assistant professor in the Faculty of Material Sciences and Engineering. He arrived at the Technion after receiving his PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and after completing an NIH postdoctoral fellowship at Harvard University. His research group studies how cells feel their environment and how the architecture of the cellular environment can program cells for healing. Finally, Jonathan Natanian, a professor at the Faculty of Architecture and Town Planning, where he is studying the interplay between architectural design and environmental function. Jonathan arrived at the Technion after completing his PhD at the Technical University of Munich. Thank you for joining us today. Faculty members play a vital role in every university. At the Technion, we are privileged to have one of the most extraordinary faculties of any technical university in the world, measured by their record of academic achievements and their influence on their area of study. Every year, 25 to 30 faculty members either retire or depart from the Technion for high paying job at the industry or because they were recruited for position at prestigious universities abroad. This means that we are always trying to keep pace with the retirement rate. To recruit the high quality researchers we seek, due to the fact that the salaries are regulated by the government, the Technion must provide scientists with research setting a comparable to the best universities abroad. State of the art facilities and equipment, technical support and the necessary resources to carry out their work and reach their full potential. The expense of setting up a lab for faculty members in science, engineering, and human health disciplines required a significant investment, ranging from $500,000 to more than $3 million. To address this need, the Technion has established several recruitment programs, including the Taub Leaders in Science and Technology program and the First Steps program, aimed at young academics just starting out, and doubt chairs designed to recognize and reward extraordinary talent at different stages of an academic career. And a newest initiative, the Faculty Recruitment Fellowship, which provides two years fellowships that make it easier for new recruits and their families to settle in at the Technion. To understand some of these issues, let's turn to our panelists. The question I would like to ask you all, of course, is why Technion? But first, tell us a little bit about your background and research. Dana, let's begin with you. Hi, I'm Dana Solav. I'm a, an assistant professor in mechanical engineering here at the Technion. I graduated with a PhD in 2016 from the same department that I returned to. My PhD research focused on human movement and developing new methods and tools for uh, improving our ability to to measure human move movement and function. After graduating, I received the MIT Technion uh, Fellowship. At MIT, I, um, I worked at the biomechatronics lab, at the media lab, that focuses on prosthetics for lower limb amputees. My research focused on the prosthetic socket, which is the, the mechanical interface between the human limb and the, and the prosthetic. After spending three years there as a postdoc, I, it was time to, to apply for faculty positions. My top priority was always to come back here at the Technion, but of course the, the opportunities are uh, in the US are very tempting, so it was not an easy decision. Uh, eventually I was very pleased with the, 
with a package I, I got from Technion and I was looking forward to come back here and work with, uh, with the students that I appreciate. I, I had the opportunity as a, as a grad student uh, and a TA. I worked with the, with the students here, so I, I knew the gifted and, and hardworking as any other prestigious university abroad. And I came back here uh, last year and um, I live on campus in the in the graduate village which is an amazing place to uh, to start uh, because it's so close to uh, to the lab and just seeing my colleagues every day and uh, interacting with everyone getting to know uh, all the colleagues from the other faculties as well is an amazing opportunity right now my uh, the focus of my new lab that I established is uh, biomechanical interfaces, which are the mechanical connections between uh, the human body and external devices like prosthetics, braces, orthotics, uh, shoes. So basically any mechanical interface we have with the environment that is supposed to help us rehabilitate from several diseases. We specifically look at uh, limb deficiencies, so any orthopedic disabilities and including scoliosis. We try to come up with new techniques to uh, optimize patient-specific devices, so personalizing the devices to each patient providing the best uh, outcome in terms of movement, comfort, reducing pain, and achieving the best outcome for the rehabilitation. Thanks, Dana. It was very inspiring. Asaf, you are next. Uh, tell us what inspired you to come back and how you find life on campus as a faculty member, as opposed to your experience as a student. Shalom, Eital, and good evening. Uh, my name is Asaf Zinger. Um, I conducted my um, undergrad studies here at the Biomedical Engineering Department at the Technion, then moved to the Chemical Engineering Department to conduct my master's and PhDs under the supervision of Professor Avi Schroeder. I'm his first PhD. During my postdoc fellow, we flew to Houston Methodist in the largest medical center in the world in Texas, and there we focused on regenerative medicine more specifically on biomimetic nanoparticles, which actually mimic the way cells in our body communicate. After finishing my postdoc, I arrived back to the same department I conducted my PhD, and now I'm, I think, the youngest assistant professor among all the huge PIs there. The Zinger lab, our lab there, the Bio-Inspired Nanoengineering and Translational Therapeutics lab, is focused on mimicking the way cells in our body communicate to deliver specific therapeutics. We are aiming our studies on rare orphan pediatric, pediatric disease like the Rett syndrome and try to deliver mRNA in order to cure or ease the pain of some of these patients. During my undergrad studies here at the Technion, I was the Technion Student Association Chairman. And as one of the uh, student leaders, I was inspired to come back. I think this institute has a DNA that runs through undergrads until the faculties. And I think at the end, we all want to do tikkun olam. So all we are trying to do is really to make this place a bit better. The fact that I'm living in the same building I lived during my PhDs is awesome. Because I remember when I was a PhD student, how the non-formal talk with the new recruitments, and I think back there in the days it was Professor Moran Berkovich, was awesome and very meaningful because there are no borders. We look at each other as equal. I think that's what really, really pushed this institute to be a high leading institute um, um, in the world. Asaf, thank you very much. It's really good to have you back. Josh, now it's your turn. Please tell us about your time and experiences at the University of Illinois and Harvard University. And how do you find differences between these institutes and the Technion? I think I'd like to start with a lot of the similarities. So one of the things that really struck me, um, you know, one of the good things about Illinois was that everything was so open and a lot of the faculty members really genuinely liked each other. And I think that's very much true here at the Technion. So one of the things that really sold me on this department versus some other options was that um, all the faculty members, they go to lunch and it's not like a 
thing um, that you have to go to, but it's something that people actually generally um, looked forward to, um, I think two or three times a week, which is pretty often. And I think the other thing, maybe the similarities say at Harvard, was that I think the Technion does a good job at managing how they spend the money pretty well. And so they really direct it towards things that um, really make a difference to new faculty members, like shared um, equipment facilities, and the startup package, making sure that people have enough money to do the things that they want to do and really enable the research to move forward. So for example, in my research, we do a lot of um, single cell and live cell imaging, but on the super resolution level. So one of the things that I'm really grateful for for the Technion package was that we were able to get our own super resolution microscope, which is you know, very expensive. So. I was really pleased at, at that aspect, and it really helped from both, you know, welcoming with the Salclita and um, just the overall environment. I think it was it was a very nice place to start up, even though you know moving during coronavirus, going from lockdown in Massachusetts, where I'm born and raised, and moving to another lockdown after the Hog, it was still. People were coming and saying, you know, do you need me to buy groceries or whatever? So it was, it was a very smooth transition, as smooth as it could be. So at Illinois, I started off working on self-healing polymers. And at Harvard, I moved in a very different direction, looking at how in biomaterials, different mechanical properties affect cell phenotype, especially with stem cells. So my research group is looking at immunomechanics and trying to understand how the immune system gets programmed to do certain things or behave in certain ways, like becoming more um, inflammatory or more self or wound healing phenotypes. And this is all due to just simply the mechanical properties of the materials. So it's a very interesting um, thing that we're applying to different diseases like preterm birth, um, which is a tremendous disease that affects many people. And uh, surprisingly, not a lot of work is being done on this. And we're also looking at CAR T-cell therapy, trying to make it more affordable and faster. Thank you, Josh. And you didn't mention that you are Ole Hadash, so welcome to Israel. Toda. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about yourself and how does your work address interdisciplinary 21st century challenges? Hi, Mital. Thank you very much. So I'm Jonathan. Uh, I'm an architect. I actually studied here and graduated around 15 years ago. And I come from a substantial experience in practice. When I led the high profile project in Israel, I always felt something is missing in the way we approach environmental considerations in the design of buildings and cities, and also through uh, consulting uh, in practice. And that led me to pursue a, a master's degree at the Architectural Association in London. At that time we relocated with uh, one child focusing on sustainable environmental design. And as soon as we came back to Israel, immediately after the master's degree, I started conducting research for the Israeli Ministry of Environmental Protection and also teaching here at the Technion and doing uh, projects uh, in uh, practice. The path, the natural path forward to do a, a doctoral study was uh, pretty obvious. And that led us overseas again to the Technical University of Munich. At TUM, at the Technical University, I my research focused on offering new methodologies for designers to receive different uh, indicators, environmental uh, performance indicators, such as daylight, energy uh, consumption, and energy generation, outdoor thermal comfort in very early stages of massing on site. And to your question, I think this is a re very relevant methodology to address the challenges of the 21st uh, century uh, of uh, unresponsive rapid urbanization. So in many areas of the world, including Israel, uh, there is a construction boom going on with very little awareness to environmental uh, performance. And uh, that's a very, uh, that's a big uh, gap to bridge. And uh, my methodology helped do doing that. Uh, the f and I'm align aligning with, with my uh, lab, the EPDL lab, Environmental Performance and Design, which represents the idea of bridging the gap between environmental engineering in design uh, and architecture. The Technion uh, has extended a very generous support for my lab, uh, including uh, cloud-based uh, sensors, remote sensing devices, interactive mixed uh, reality and augmented reality uh, interfaces. 
And uh, I think that this equipment hints the cross-disciplinary and also cross-contextual and cross-scale approach we must adopt in order to face these challenges we talked about before of sustainability in architecture. I'm also very excited about the awareness, both in Israel and the Technion. So I think the question shifts from if we should do sustainable design to how we should do it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, me and my uh, labs team are going to step in with research and teaching. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you all for this fascinating conversation. Enjoy the rest of the evening.